this image has been photoshopped. The word photoshop has become synonymous with image editing. But will we ever get to see a replacement for this is what we are going to check out today. Adobe Photoshop has been around for quite a long time and it has been used by professionals to create advertisements and movie posters to beginners to do basic image editing. But when it comes to beginners, one of the challenging things with regard to Adobe Photoshop is the pricing. Adobe Photoshop is more of like a subscription model wherein you have to pay a monthly subscription fee to be able to use the tool continuously over the next one month. But if not for a professional, it becomes really challenging for beginners and college students to afford something like Adobe Photoshop for their image editing needs. It's at this point that folks like Affinity Photo and Luminar Neptune come into picture. Both of these tools have been around for quite some time now, but the enhancement and the pricing model are what makes them really attractive. Let's check out how they stand against Photoshop. To begin with, let's start looking into Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is by a company called Serif and it's been around for quite some time and it had been only Mac uh, software. But quite some time back, they did release the Windows version. Now it's available for both Windows and Mac. And the best part is in WWDC 2017, they even released a version for iOS 11. So now you can use Affinity Photo on iPads as well. In the very beginning, if you open Affinity Photo on your system, the very first impression is that it looks exactly like Photoshop. So all the tools, all the layout, the color schema, everything looks like Photoshop. So it's very intuitive and it's very easy to learn. It even carries for a lot of things from Photoshop, things like filters or adjustment layers. For that matter, even the keyboard shortcuts are carried forward from Adobe Photoshop. But there are quite a few things which make Affinity Photo really interesting apart from the pricing. Here are a few of the things which I found very interesting in Affinity Photo. The first thing is your smart objects. Every new layer in Affinity Photo is a smart object by default, which is not the case in Adobe Photoshop. What this actually means is that you can actually go back to that particular layer and do finer adjustment, which is not actually possible straightforward in Adobe Photoshop. Second thing is the live blend modes. Blend modes is something which you, once you get used to it, you'll start loving it and start using it on most of your image editing process. The issue with Adobe Photoshop and blend modes is that you should actually go ahead and apply the blend modes to be able to figure out what is the end result of a specific blend mode. But this is not the case in Affinity Photo, wherein it has something called as live blend modes. So if you actually scroll through a particular list of blend modes, it will give you a live preview of what the end result of the blend mode on the image itself. No, it's not a small preview. It gives you what actually happens to image on the image itself. So you can actually scroll through and select the blend mode that you want to use on that specific image. The third thing that I liked about in Affinity Photo is that lighting feature. There is a specific feature called lighting which you can actually add a light source to an image. This is very helpful for people who are into advertising field and they want to do sort of like a multiple light addition thing to make their image stand out or even the product stand out more. So this comes in very handy and it has a lot of finer controls, things like color temperature, the intensity and the direction, everything. So this is some feature which I actually liked a lot. But I have not specifically tried it out on any of my image, but I found that the particular lighting feature to be very sophisticated and very handy. Apart from this, Affinity Photo can be used to do things like your pano editing or doing HDR or probably even things like image retouching for fashion or glamour photography. The pricing for Affinity Photo is really, really competitive. It's just priced at around 3000 Indian rupees, which sums up to around $40 US. So this makes it very, very competitive when you compare it with Adobe Photoshop. And this is just a one-time fee and all the future updates are freely available for you. So you don't have to keep on paying additional amount when there is a new version of Affinity Photo or probably any software updates or support for any of the new cameras come in future. So it's absolutely free for future upgrades and it's just a one-time fee of 3000 rupees. Now let's have a look at the other competitor which is Luminar. Luminar is by a company called MacFun and the latest version of Luminar is called Luminar Neptune. Luminar is by the same company which does the Aurora HDR, which is one of the industry's leading HDR software. This is done in conjunction with Trey Ratcliffe, who is considered as the best person to deal with when it comes to HDR photography. So it's by the same company which does Aurora HDR and a lot of other plugins for uh, Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom and things like that. But the best part about Luminar is that it can work as a plugin on top of your Photoshop or probably even photos in macOS and also it can work as a standalone tool 
Yes, you heard it right. It's a standalone tool as well as it can work as a plugin inside Adobe Photoshop. You might be thinking this is in lines with the Nick software which was there quite some time back. Yes, it's exactly like that, but hope you folks know that Nick software is no longer supported by Google and there is no longer a development that happens. So once you get to move into High Sierra, there is no longer support for 32-bit software and that's sort of like a closed door for Nick software. And this is exactly the place where the Luminar Neptune comes into picture. Just like Affinity Photo or Photoshop, even the Luminar Neptune is very intuitive and it's very easy to learn. One of the interesting things about the Luminar Neptune is the availability of 41 filters. Filters and it's not presets. Presets are pre-baked in looks and filters are something in lines with your adjustment layers in Photoshop. Yes, 41 different filters are available for your disposal in Luminar Neptune, which you can use for finer control of editing on your images. One of the best selling point of the Luminar Neptune is the Ascent AI filter. This is one of the filters that is available in Luminar Neptune, which makes use of artificial intelligence to enhance your images. If you are someone who don't want to spend too much of time you're editing images and you don't want to get into the hassle of creating multiple layers and masking and all those things, the Accent AI filter is what comes into picture there. You just have to load your image and click on this particular filter. The tool basically what it does is it, it, it studies your images and applies all the filters that is required for that particular image and enhances that image. But you do continue to get all the finer controls. So if you want to play around with the saturation or you want to play around with the exposure, you still have all those controls. But this is sort of like a one-step solution for all the image editing available in Luminar Neptune, which is one of the best selling points of this particular tool. What the folks at MacFun have also done is that they are allowing plugins to be loaded inside Luminar Neptune. So that means that if you already have any of the software tools that is created by MacFun, example, the Aurora HDR, which if you already have a license of that, you can actually load that plugin from inside Luminar Neptune and you can continue using it to edit your images like you want to do HDR editing and then continue back for a finer editing, you can actually do it inside the Luminar. Currently the Luminar Neptune is Mac, but I have noticed in the website that they are coming up with the Windows version also. So you might want to try out either of these tools and see if it suits your particular need and if it can actually replace Photoshop in your particular workflow. The Luminar Neptune is also quite competitively priced. It's priced slightly above the Affinity Photo. The pricing for the Luminar Neptune is about 4,500 rupees, which is approximately 69 to $70 dollars. But it's again not comparable with Photoshop, which is quite expensive when you look at it at a long-term investment. Again, this thing uh, with Luminar Neptune is that it's a single investment and any updates in future is absolutely free of cost. So these are a couple of tools, which is the Affinity Photo and Luminar Neptune, which are available, which we can actually call it as a competitor for Adobe Photoshop. But there are a lot of drawbacks in these tools also, especially things like round tripping that you can do in Adobe tools. For example, you can op open a particular image sequence in Adobe After Effects. You can send it to Adobe Photoshop for further enhancing and then send it back for further uh, video editing. Those types of round tripping is not possible if you're using Affinity Photo or Luminar in your workflow, which involves Adobe system. Second thing I personally felt is like the ability to do all this 3D imaging or 3D rendering which is available in photo is not yet supported in any of these tools. And things like video editing, Adobe Photoshop actually supports video editing and basic color correction and color grading and even time lapse building for, uh, for folks who shoot uh, time lapse. Those features are still not available in Affinity Photo or Luminar Neptune. One thing personally I found missing in both these tools is the ability to do digital asset management. Adobe Lightroom is one specific tool which I use extensively for all my digital asset management, whether it could be cataloging of images or it could be keywording or it could be segregating different shoots and all the stuff. Adobe Lightroom is very, very sophisticated and it's something perfect for that need. Neither of these tools as of now have this option, but I did notice on the Twitter stream just a week ago that Affinity Photo, the folks behind Affinity Photo are actually planning to bring out a digital asset management tool which can work along with Affinity Photo. So I tried to search in the web about uh, this particular uh, tool and there is nothing much of uh, information available in any of the forums as well. So you might have to wait and watch for a few more weeks or probably even months to see that particular tool. The inavailability of a proper sophisticated digital asset management tool is something which you might want to consider as a negative for these two particular tools. So for now, we can actually say that though this is a worthwhile competitor for Adobe Photoshop, this will not exactly replace Photoshop for any of the person. It's, there might be professional who, who are using Photoshop who might consider investing on these particular tools for some of the specific needs, but this will definitely not replace their Adobe Photoshop tool in their workflow. 
this could also be a good alternative for small businesses and students who can't afford to keep on uh, opting for that creative cloud package where you need to uh, renew it by paying money every month this could be one single investment option for those type of people so that's it for this video these are the two tools which i wanted to suggest as an alternative for adobe photoshop if you are not okay with the, the subscription model which adobe brings in so please do give it a try there are uh, links available in the show notes below for the both the websites you can actually download the trial version of it and try it out on your images and see if it suits your need and if you do like it the cost is not too high for you to actually purchase a licensed copy of those two tools so do let me know in the comment section below what is that specific tool that you liked in both of them and if either of them can actually be a good replacement for your uh, image editing needs so that's it from me this is shiv signing off from technology i'll see you guys again in the next one